Hello wonderful teachers welcome back to another episode of Teaching Tales I'm your host Michelle Dennis and I'm absolutely thrilled to introduce today's extraordinary guest but before we dive into our conversation make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Sarasa to stay on top with our incredible episodes now without further delay let's give a warm welcome to our amazing guest Ms Shreya Mutama KS a passionate math teacher from Karnataka India currently making an impact in the classroom of the United Arab Emirates welcome to the show shreya thank you michelle it's a pleasure to be a part of the podcast really it's a pleasure it's a pleasure to have you with us here today so shreya i i and all are everybody listening to the podcast is eager to hear about your journey into teaching mathematics Like what sparked your interest, and how did you find your way into this incredible profession of teaching? In fact, I was a normal student when I was studying, and uh, I had no much passion to go on into teaching. But then, yes, like all kids during our childhood, I was a person who would uh, wrap on my mom's sari and you know take out the blackboard and start teaching. That was there. But then I never thought in my life I would be a teacher, though. <laughs> then i got into my uh, bachelor's after immediately after my graduation i got married took a break of 2 years and that is when after my uh, first one after i had my little one that is when i actually thought yeah it's been enough of break i need to get back i need to do something you know i was uh, lost with the family within the family and i wanted to do something on my own then uh, i automatically starts sat back and thought like what what can i do there came one of my professor from uh, my uh, bachelor's he was a mathematics professor mr bosco uh, he inspired me during my entire journey in uh, bsc so i thought why not try mathematics why not go with that and that is where i took up my masters but then even then i had not thought about teaching though I got in and I just started uh, doing my masters and on the go there was a lecturer who actually took me to on the towards the end of my uh, masters he directly told me you know I'm going to Kodagu that was my native mm. so he told I'm going there for to give a lecture can you accompany me I just went along and uh, he just set up an interview with the management there and uh, they told me to just uh, sit for some for a while and prepare for a session and give a demo and within a week i got a call stating that you are uh, selected and you have to come and join after your uh, exams that is where i actually started my journey and i thought okay now i should be a teacher <laughs> i really didn't dream of it but that's how it went on <laughs> well um i think i had one other teacher also who said that um teaching was not her first passion or teaching was not the, her first choice of profession and she accidentally got into the profession yeah. so it sounds similar to your story wherein it wasn't the first thing that came to your mind when you thought of a profession but then it came to you and now it feels like it's the right thing seriously it is the right thing and i'm really loving each day teaching very nice very nice so I mean teaching is a roller coaster right I mean no doubt about it but it has its fair shares of ups and downs and with 8 years of teaching experience under your belt surely I mean you must have faced challenges right so can you share a moment where you thought about giving up but then found the strength to carry on like what kept you going do you have a moment like that where you question the decision yes i do have uh, like you know i can say my third year of teaching first i got into pu i taught there for a year and then a year i spent uh, teaching with the degree students mm-hmm. that is bcom as well as bca students and then i got down to 10th grade that was in a cbsc school that is where actually i found a different atmosphere like uh, before that the students as soon as i enter in they were like quite silent seated and they would listen to what we say mm. there was an interaction and this was a classroom where they would stand up 
walk around i'm inside the class and i would see students walking around and you know least bother about what's going on in the class that is when i really thought what's going on and what am i doing what am i supposed to do <laughs> and uh, that was the point where i thought did i make a mistake coming down from okay. the higher uh. to you know secondary school where the students are still not under control and it took me like a week or so to even settle down and understand i was uh, literally in a verge to give up and then the institute like i spoke to the principal and she said no you can you just try she motivated me she told you mm-hmm. can actually you know try to understand them and give them what they want and through her inspirational words and my effort i would uh, you know spend more hours in understanding the students and knowing what i'm actually supposed to do not in the academic way or not in the subject but how to control the group and finally after uh, i can say two weeks i slowly gradually got a control on them it's mainly by understanding what they wanted knowing them emotionally okay. that connected me okay and that is where actually i felt the need to do my uh, you know ba as well oh nice so so in your experience you have taught uh bcom students who have passed out of school and they're a little more mature and you have taught now secondary school students as well in your eyes what was the major difference that you saw between these two batches of students in terms of their learning capability there's a huge difference in fact i have also taught uh, a year in uh, nursery as well okay so i have i can say from nursery to degree i have a connect to the students so overall if i have to speak about it um there is a huge difference from each uh, grade like from nursery if you go up to primary and then the secondary um the degree the graduation students are more matured they know what they want and they know how they supposed to accept it they can be students who are not interested in the subject they just walk out they don't even stay in this classroom okay. but then these secondary students they have no option they have to yeah. stay in the class they interested or not they have to be there and that is where teachers have to play an important role in uh, you know managing their temperaments making sure that each one concentrates as well as understands what they have to learn and that is a stepping stone for them like 10th grade they have to do better there so that they understand what they are supposed to take up next and okay. my subject is a, i can say is a most difficult uh, subject they treat it as <laughs> yes i i can i can testament to that when i was in 10th grade i was like i hated math <laughs> most of them say that and that's a challenge for a teacher being a math teacher it's a challenge for us to you know make the students at least like it till they pass out and they get a chance to you know choose i mean i, I can absolutely understand like making someone or making a student love math can be a very difficult i mean it is a difficult task no doubt about it because when we look at math and you have to look at trigonometry and cos and theta and everything and you're like oh god i have to study all of this no my mind's going to explode and then you think when am i ever going to use these things yeah right that is the key actually you know like uh, before uh, i can say when i started my uh, career as a teacher i didn't know much to implement in the classroom other than use my blackboard i and tell them like how to follow up the steps and solve a problem but as uh, years went on and we started learning more and also i can say it's a thanks to covid as well that is when everyone got into this online and yeah. uh, you know explored the ways of teaching so now i can actually tell that we can make it interesting by connecting it to real life that is very important so once a yeah. student know why they have to learn a particular topic they'll put an in interest if we simply say this is how you have to solve a multiplication uh, problem they'll not like they'll not like it but if we say this is where you will implement it this is where you need to know it and this is the way you can solve it then they'll know okay i'll need it that's so that's the reason i'll have to learn so if they know the purpose of their learning i think it will be more better yeah because um i guess 
when or when you started teaching you started teaching has how you were taught in school right and yes. when we were taught at those days it would have been like okay this is how it's done so learn this right it was never yeah. explained that okay you can use these things in these or in this part of your daily life or this is how it will come in handy but now True. that you have started teaching it that way to your students i'm sure when if and when any of them decide to become teachers that they will use those methods as well true actually yeah. these days uh, you can say the present generation is blessed in that way they have a very very good set of teachers and you know they actually put in a lot of effort to try and help the students when yeah. uh, we we had good teachers i'm not saying they were not good but we didn't have enough uh, teaching strategies or tools to put in in the classroom true so. very true yeah it, it was limited i mean even in terms of technology also we did not have much blackboard or a whiteboard was the most and then connecting maybe experiments in class or group activities that was it there wasn't has the number of strategies that are there today i don't think was there at that time when you and yes. i were studying that is there and also the learning styles of students were not in consideration then it was yes. a whole class approach so yep. even if you like it or no you had to follow up but now Very you true. have a option to give them different approaches like you can give a visual learner a video to watch and another to do some hands on activity so that's where you can connect with the students learning style and make them learn yes absolutely great so shreya like we were talking you've taught in various settings right from primary school to college from online platforms to now in the uae so some say that there are limited opportunities in teaching but you've explored different facets So what's your perspective on the opportunities available in the field of teaching especially in 2023 There's a huge opportunity actually but uh, we need some time to explore and get in the right path which we are interested in a lot more than what a normal teacher would be few decades back So I actually say there's a huge opportunity coming up for teachers especially all around the globe wherein uh, you can you can become a coordinator you can also become a content uh, developer there is a huge opportunity it all depends on what interests you what's your passion so right. based on that uh, there's a lot of opportunity as a teacher yeah i even Gone like the day, teachers are paid less and teachers can uh, you know grow up develop uh, professionally but these days there are huge opportunities for them yeah. as well very true like i i have you know i've met teachers who started teaching and then have branched out into curriculum developers or they are they're developing content for online platforms i mean the opportunities available these days for teachers it's it's just numerous innumerable i would say so much even based on your interest like you can create content in terms of visual content and audio content even written content so it's it's a lot even they can be a youtuber where they can share their knowledge to you know students who really want to reach out to that can also be a very good platform for them very true very true so uh so you said that okay when you started teaching you had only done your masters right and then you decided to do your ba uh from bangalore university you specialized in math and fast forward to 2 years and you decided to dive back into learning with pgcdl program from sarasa like what sparked that decision like what made you want to continue your learning and upskilling journey even after getting teaching experience like why did you feel that that was important yeah uh i i did my b8 uh, which was uh, more of a theoretical uh, based thing there was a little bit of practical yes but not i didn't actually understand the intense meaning of what i was learning there and then uh, once the covid start and we all uh, sat back at home 
those were the days when i would simply scroll down uh, insta and check is there any opportunity where i can get into it's enough high time sitting back at home now and there were like online classes just one or two hours in a day and we would shut off and uh, there i came across surasa i spoke with a mentor and uh, he explained everything to me he said it's actually you know a platform where you can get to teach with uh, international schools you get to pro- develop yourself professionally and you will have uh, teachers in your group or from all over the globe that actually fascinated me i thought okay i'll get to connect with a community where uh, there are teachers from different parts of the world i'll get to know what they do in their classroom so that can help me develop as a teacher as well and i thought okay let let me give it a try and that is how i got into pgc till and i'm really glad that i took that step then that it's actually great. taught me practically what everything that i learn in ba is okay and um do you feel that having done pgctl has impacted the way that you teach in class and how much do you think it has impacted your teaching it has it has impacted a great uh, i can say yes uh, because uh, you know before i would implement certain things but i would not give much uh, importance to behaviorism the behavioral uh, challenges that i see in the classroom but these days after i attended all the classes and uh, you know the main thing i liked about uh, like surasa is like you know uh, there's a self paced uh, videos which we mm-hmm. can watch and learn i can say uh, rishab's class is there even my daughter would join <laughs> and she would watch with me go through all the behavioral law and classroom management and dynamics and she would say okay mama this is so nice to listen she would come and join sit with me <laughs> and uh, that is where actually i understood the impact when kids can understand when they can actually you know connect it yeah. then teacher we should be able to connect it to our classroom as well so that is where uh, i started implementing it in my classroom if i have a student who is uh, not concentrating in the topic i know that he don't like math that is where i should know what what actually interests him how can i get him into the topic mm. so i would communicate to him talk to him when a bond is created between a teacher and a student the learning happens when they are yeah. free enough to you know speak out and tell okay this is a challenge that i am facing this is a problem i am facing and we help them up individually then they will start showing some interest in the topic or the subject mm-hmm. so that is how i could uh, relate like uh, the things that i learnt in pgctl in my classroom and it's really helped me a lot awesome that that's great to hear i'm so glad to know that you know it has made such a impact and difference in the way you teach and how you view your class at this moment so yes for teachers looking to grow in their career you are an example absolutely because even after you had experience in teaching you still decided to take up pgctl so what do you why do you believe that upskilling and you know taking courses like pgctl are crucial like what are what benefits have you personally gained from such professional development i can say as generation grows the students are also you know in the they are blooming up so if we keep to our old professional ways of teaching it will never help them out so as a teacher we have to professionally grow and also we should make sure that we can connect to the students learning styles and i can say they know a lot more than what we know these days because of technology so if we don't upgrade ourselves if we don't include technology in the classroom i feel we are lost somewhere and mm-hmm. even we'll not be able to connect to the students so it is very very important for a teacher especially as a teacher to connect with the upskills uh, to upskill themselves because they are the ones who are really helping all other professionals to grow up like as uh, little minds they grow up they have to grow up as a doctor or engineer or something so we are the ones who will help teach them how they can yeah. connect how they can actually connect to what they have to be so if we don't upgrade ourselves if we don't uh, you know learn what is the day's need current need 
we will not be able to cater to the students needs as well very true like uh, i had a previous podcast guest who said this similar thing where he said that uh, engineers doctors um architects all of them are constantly upgrading their skills so why not teachers because teachers are the ones who are teaching all the rest of the profession right so That's it's true. very important for teachers themselves as well to make sure that they are up to date that they can relate yeah that's true right <laughs> great so while we were talking earlier you you took an example that you know if there is a student in your class who's not paying attention it means that okay most probably the student is not interested in math right so we recently had an awesome math and physics teacher on our podcast he's uh he's who's teaching in indonesia at the moment so he shared an interesting story wherein he also was in a similar situation where he noticed the student in his class was not really interested in physics all right mm. and what he did was but he he knew that the student liked to sing the student liked music so he identified that and then he decided to find a youtube video which was song based to teach the student physics all right so that I, i mean along with that you know he also continued doing remedial classes uh, for the student to help her get more to understand physics better but he took that one step that made a lot of difference and got the student at least pique the student's interest in physics so that got me thinking and i was wondering what is your secret for making mathematics cool in your classroom like any special tricks or hacks that you found really click with your students to make them to get their interest peaked in math in fact i am really impressed the way the teacher took up that step a big kudos to him and the um, speaking about my strategies i always try to start up with an energizer where uh, if i get into the classroom after the break session most of the students are counting time to get back home so what i do is i try to energize i can speak about one of the recent class that i took up i teach year 5 here now so okay. that is where you know like uh, i had to take up a lesson on angles so i just started up with an energizer where there was a music played i had actually trained the students before one day before i just shown them a video and next day i just uh, played the music and uh, it's like it says a right angle says 90 degree so they had to you know do their exercise with their hands okay. 90 degree they had to move uh-huh. their hands up and then acute angle less than 90 degree and obtuse angle so that's where they understand how the angles are formed like they know what is the shape of the angle and they are actually ener- energized with that they sing and they exercise and then they sit then we start up with an starter activity where uh, i have to implement uh, complementary angles to them and i don't directly tell them okay this is complementary angle the sum of two angles adds up to 90 it's complementary what i did was i gave them hands out like uh, cutouts of angles where it was uh, maybe like 45 degree i cut it in between like 20 and uh, 25 and i give to them of the same color and they had to work in groups so when they work in group there's collaboration created and in groups they make a note of all the angles and they sum that up so each group had four different angles one acute obtuse right and straight and they had to note down the sum of all the angles and they had to come and put it up on the board where they was given a table So finally I asked them what is that same thing that you see up on the board then they say ma'am each group has 90 degree and 180 degree as a sum for uh, one set of angles and remaining varies so that is where i introduced uh, like complementary angles and supplementary angles so what i feel is instead of us directly going on to the topic if we start up with some activity and they come up to a point where i can introduce the topic that will be more interesting than i simply telling them okay this is complementary angle now do the problems oh wow so that nice that i'm i'm sure that is actually nice advice or great advice for all our listeners all our what everyone watching the podcast because 
yes that that does energize kids right whenever you start a class with an activity it's always fun that's there but sometimes it goes way out of it you can't control the classroom as well <laughs> yes there is absolutely there, there is pros and cons to everything right yeah. uh you have taught both in india and now you're currently teaching in the uae right so what similarities or differences do you or have you observed observed in the education setting of these of both the countries like any advice for teachers considering moving moving to the uae i can say teaching is the same either way like uh, depends on our uh, passion and the way we approach the students uh, in india it's more academic than uh, you know the holistic uh, development whereas here i see the students holistic development and their interest is more given more importance rather than the academic perspective but then i can say in india again there's lot more changing so yeah. there's a whole uh, way like the approach in teaching is changed and uh, there is uh, all the uh, different teaching tools are uh, implemented in the classroom and um, i can say i taught in a state board as well so only thing the difference that i see from day to here is the parents involvement because i was uh, teaching in a rural area for some time so there i saw the parents involvement into teaching was quite less mm. but again when we go to urban it's there uh, but then uh, in such areas it's very difficult to implement technology as well so that is where we have to try and uh, you know uh, build up the, or develop the schools in such a way that we can help them get a hang of technology those are the schools where who are deprived of uh, technology i can say there will be interactive uh, boards there will be smart boards yes but the students don't have a, you know connectivity back at home where they can uh, get in touch with the online tools where okay. uh, we give them lot of uh, quiz or uh, activities to work on so everything has to be done in school and it has to close in school so what you can give them back home is just a homework which they have to you know do and come so those are the uh, like schools or rural areas where uh, the students are actually deprived of so if uh, opportunity can uh, build up where they can be given the main reason that they can't work at home is the remote areas that they stay in and connectivity so if mm-hmm. that can be actually improved in the areas again they will know what else is there what uh, more they can do in education so those are the things in certain areas of uh, our country i can say has to improve um but otherwise i feel law uh, teaching depends on the teacher anywhere it is okay. ua or maybe india but again now uh, here i have a community of uh, students in my classroom who are from different nationalities and that's a challenge you know keeping up with uh, different nationalities and maintaining them as a group there should mm-hmm. not be any you know arguments in between the countries and stuff so but it's really nice i can say there's a holistic approach to teaching here and one advice what i can give to the teachers who are really planning to come up here is stick on to your passion the more passionate you are you will get the opportunity you will bag it that's nice. the only thing like uh, there's nothing more that you have to do be yourself and be passionate to my nice. teaching very nice so so in this this one question you said that okay um two things i feel from what you have said is one is the amount of participation from parents now in where you taught in the rural areas it was very less where in here in the urban areas you feel that it's more the other difference is uh the class mix where in where you taught in india it was obviously it was all everybody was from the same place or maybe different states but same same country where in in uae you are teaching kids from different countries right okay so how challenging or have you had a situation wherein you know 
there was a misunderstanding between students from different parts of the world and you had to maybe break up that misunderstanding or make them realize that okay you know this is not something that you should be fighting about yeah there is uh, like i can say they were not from the different uh, country as well they were, they were students from the same country but then they were like uh, two girls and two boys who constantly have uh, issues with each other like a simple thing they call it bullying okay. but then it would be like simply saying uh, you're a nerd the, those things you know like in the classroom when uh, they have their free time and then they come up with the complaint once i just said please settle down you don't have to you know speak about uh, each other in the classroom have a good uh, healthy relationship and i send them but then the matter didn't settle there they took it uh, further to parents and parents sent a mail and it went on and then i uh, called all uh, four students together and then i made them realize what's the impact that they're creating at home as well as in school speaking about small things which can be actually forgotten at school and they can get back home and then uh, they, i asked them uh, like whose mistake is it is there any particular person whom you can point out on and say it's his mistake always or her mistake always and then they agreed no ma'am we all were at fault and you know making them realize like what they have done and how it's impacted the parents and the parents are you know literally speaking about each other so yeah. that's it like even though they are small they can understand so what i feel is uh, there are uh, situations where they speak about their country and uh, we need to you know try to settle it down there so that the matter don't prolong if it's something uh, positive yes we do speak for it or else if there's a war now there's a war going on between palestine and yeah. they ask ma'am who do you support i said uh, no i wouldn't like to you know give out my re- view of that because that would be something against their uh, opinion as well yeah so the uh, areas where we have to you know settle down things saying uh, i'm sorry i would not like to you know say anything about it yeah. every country has their own like and every person has their own perspective so it's up to us whom we have to support yeah. so as a teacher if we particularly fix to a particular thing then it can be a misconception as well <laughs> yeah very true especially like right now what is happening in palestine and israel like in the gulf this is a topic of discussion i'm sure it yeah. is a topic of discussion everywhere because it's something that can be close to people's hearts because there are palestinian and israeli living was asking me whom will you support i was like uh, thinking it can affect like if i say it can very can't much not it yeah. will be a great impact on them so that is where yeah. i don't know i have like to share my opinion yeah <laughs> absolutely i can absolutely understand great so we we crossed all the tough questions and everything and now it's time for some fun okay yeah. we've got this a uh, little segment that we call the rapid fire round it's the, like a lightning speed q and a session i've got 10 quick quirky questions lined up just for you all right uh no pressure i'm going to give you 120 seconds <laughs> okay and you've just got to give me the answer that comes to your mind quickly you've got 120 seconds okay uh so far no one has been able to break the record oh. or yes no one has been able to answer all 10 questions within 120 seconds but uh maybe you can <laughs> we'll try just a word right a word or a sentence Ha so I'm going to ask you a question and you just need to give me the answer quickly. All right? So are you ready? Yes. Okay, I'm going to start the timer. Okay? Uh what's the song you can't get enough of these days? Oh, uh, in fact, calm down. I do listen. <laughs> okay. Okay, one uh one food item that you have recently discovered and loved and fallen in love in the UAE. uh the mandi and the sweet well they give oh yes kanafa yes i i love them too yes uh okay so i got to know that you love hiking uh what's your next dream hiking destination i actually dream to hike a peak in cl- close to my place it's known as uh, tadianda mole i've never been there i have to go there wow nice uh okay If you could magically add an extra hour to your day, how would you spend it? 
relaxing <laughs> okay if you had to teach a different subject what would it be right now i can't think of any other subject maybe english yeah okay but i'll uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right so if we peeked into your uh bag your teacher bag right now okay what's the most unexpected or quirky item we would find like something that you that would be like oh you carry this i think you won't find anything other than the worksheets and you know <laughs> all the stationery and pens. all of that right yeah. lot okay. of regular things which we used for corrections though so. Okay. So if you could travel back to your first year of teaching, what's one advice you would give yourself? Be well prepared to teach the current generation like that was not there then. I would just okay. use a blackboard then. Okay. So what's your favorite TV show? Currently actually I don't watch, but I, if I get back to those days, I can say Friends was all time show that i would enjoy i'm sure you uh, you would have been heartbroken when you heard of matthew perry's passing yeah seriously i was a lot of my then friends I were to watch two more episodes you know just to revisit the memories all right and one thing that you love about sarata it's a great platform uh, where you can constantly learn and they keep upgrading us with master classes and many more things i really that's the one thing it's an empowering uh, place where you can learn more and more and more there's no end to it nice and with that we come to the end of our rapid fire session oh thank you uh, did i keep the time no you did not <laughs> I I can understand why 120 seconds is a short time for 10 questions and it's a lot of pressure but it's okay. I'm I'm hoping one one of my podcast guests is going to break that record. Let's hope so. Okay. So I've got to say that uh teaching actually holds a special place in my heart because I come from a family of teachers. My mother was a teacher, uh my grandmother was a teacher as well. and it was part of my upbringing like to see my mom going to school my aunts going to school i have aunts who are teachers who who were teachers who are still teachers principals vice principals and things so full family of teachers okay but i'm really curious and this is my last question for you okay like how would you describe your love for teaching like what is it about this profession that makes it not just a job but something truly special because you mentioned many at times that it's a passion so what makes it special it is one profession where uh, you it's i'm not saying it's easy it's handsful job but then it's a profession where uh, your students can make you smile they are always there with you like 24 by 7 even when you cook you think of a student in the class who did well or maybe who was amazing in his work or who is not good so i think no other profession actually can give you that smile thinking back about some you know one of your client you won't be smiling then if you are in some other profession but students they make you laugh they make you smile and at times they make you get annoyed also but every day is different each day is different it's not just you go in front of a system and sit and work mm-hmm. it's a profession where you get to do lot more it's not just teaching you have to prepare them for cultural activities you have to prepare them for their quiz and you have lots to do there so there's emotional attachment as well so that is how it makes it different from all other professions Wow just just with you saying that i can see how much you love this profession and the smile that there on your face it, it it just speaks volumes for your love for this profession all right so thank you so much shreya for one for that amazing reply for why you love teaching and also for sharing your incredible journey your insights with us on teaching tales It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and sit with us today. It was a great pleasure here too being a part of the podcast. Thank you for giving me so, this opportunity. So happy to hear that. 
and to our fantastic listeners thank you for joining us today i'll be back super soon with another guest on our show until then keep your passion for teaching alive this is michelle see you next time bye